I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. In the summer of 2023, Leah Thompson, a seasoned hiker and nature photographer, embarked on a week-long trek through the remote Appalachian woodlands, a region steeped in folklore and tales of unexplained phenomena. Leah, a skeptic by nature, was more interested in the rugged beauty and wildlife of the area than in the myths that frightened and fascinated the locals. Her journey began under the lush canopy of towering oaks and maples, with Leah documenting her adventure meticulously through photographs and journal entries. The early days of her hike passed without incident, filled with serene encounters with deer and breathtaking sunrises. However, as she ventured deeper into less traveled parts of the forest, Leah started noticing oddities. Trees with deep scratches that climbed high up the trunks, far beyond the reach of any bear. She chalked it up to some environmental cause or perhaps mischievous hikers exaggerating the marks and continued on her path. One evening, as twilight descended upon her campsite nestled beside a small brook, Leah began to feel an unnerving sense of being watched. Initially dismissing it as the natural anxiety of being a lone woman in the wilderness, she secured her camp and prepared for bed. But as she settled down, the rustling of leaves and subtle snapping of twigs nearby grew more frequent and seemed to encircle her tent. Leah grabbed her flashlight and stepped outside, scanning the darkness for signs of wildlife. She called out, challenging the intruder with a firm voice, but the forest fell silent, as if holding its breath. Unease prickled at the back of her neck, and for the first time, she felt a flicker of fear that the local tales might hold a grain of truth. The next day, Leah found more strange markings and small, inexplicable items scattered near her path. Dolls made of twigs, strings of feathers, and stones arranged in peculiar patterns. The unease from the previous night crept into her daylight hours, leaving her constantly glancing over her shoulder. That night, her anxiety was palpable. She set up her tent in a small clearing, hoping the openness would relieve her sense of claustrophobia from the looming trees. As darkness enveloped her camp, the earlier sensations of being watched returned, stronger than before. Leah tried to distract herself by reviewing the photos she had taken that day on her digital camera. As she scrolled through the images, her breath caught in her throat. One photo showed a distant figure, humanoid but grotesquely thin, with elongated limbs, standing at the edge of a clearing. She didn't remember seeing anything like that when she took the photo. Panic set in, and Leah decided she could not stay in her tent. She packed up her essentials and turned on her GPS device, planning to hike through the night back to a ranger station she had passed a few days earlier, but the device flickered and went dead, despite being fully charged earlier. As she frantically tried to restart the GPS, the chilling sound of scraping against the ground echoed through the trees. The noise was slow, deliberate, and getting closer. Leah picked up her pace, flashlight in hand, darting quick glances behind her. Each glance revealed nothing, but the scraping sound continued, a constant reminder that something was following. The moon provided little light, obscured by thick clouds, and the forest around her seemed to close in, branches brushing against her like fingers. The story of Leah Thompson, alone in the Appalachian wilderness, was far from over. Her escape through the night, guided only by the beam of her flashlight, and pursued by an unknown entity, would test the limits of her courage and sanity. Leah's heart pounded as she navigated the uneven terrain, the beam of her flashlight cutting through the oppressive darkness of the forest. The scraping sound seemed to follow at a consistent pace, never growing closer nor falling behind a persistent reminder of her pursuer's presence. With her GPS device dead and her sense of direction challenged by the night and her growing panic, Leah focused on moving downhill, reasoning that it might lead her to a stream or pathway that could guide her back to more familiar territory. Her breathing grew labored as she pushed through thick underbrush, the scraping noise mingling with the sounds of her desperate escape. Suddenly, Leah stumbled into a small clearing, the moon breaking through the clouds, and casting ghostly shadows across the ground. She paused, gasping for air, using the moment to scan her surroundings. The sound had stopped. The silence was as unnerving as the noise had been, and Leah felt the eerie calm before a storm. She didn't have long to catch her breath. From the edge of the clearing, 
she heard a soft, ghastly whisper, as if the wind itself were speaking. Leave, it hissed, the voice neither male nor female, sending a chill down her spine. Leah's eyes darted around, trying to locate the source of the whisper, but saw nothing. Deciding she couldn't wait around, Leah continued her frantic pace, now more certain than ever that she needed to get out of the woods. The terrain began to slope more steeply, and she hoped this meant she was nearing a river that she knew ran through the area and could lead her back to civilization. As she descended, the underbrush became denser, making her progress frustratingly slow. Every few steps, she would turn to shine her light behind her, half expecting to see whatever was stalking her materialize in the light. But there was nothing, only the normal shadows of the forest. Though in her state of heightened fear, every twig and bush seemed like a lurking figure. The whisper came again, louder this time. Leave! Now! It echoed around her, the direction impossible to pinpoint. Leah's mind raced. Was this the creature known as the Rake, or was she experiencing the effects of isolation and terror? Her internal debate was cut short when she heard a rustle above her. Instinctively, she looked up, shining her light into the branches of an old gnarled oak. There, perched like a grotesque bird, was the creature from her photograph. It was horrifyingly thin, its skin pale and taut over its bones, and its eyes glowed faintly in the flashlight's beam. Leah gasped, frozen in place, her fear rooting her to the spot. The creature tilted its head, considering her with a malevolent curiosity. Then, without warning, it leaped from the tree, landing on all fours a few yards away from her. Its movements were unnatural, jerky, and spider-like. The creature paused, as if gauging her response, its thin lips curling into a semblance of a smile. Leah's survival instincts finally kicked in. She turned and ran, her fear lending speed to her legs, her mind screaming for her to escape. The forest seemed to come alive around her, branches reaching out to snag her clothes, roots rising up to trip her, and all the while, the sound of the creature's scraping limbs followed close behind. The story of Leah Thompson, her desperate race through the night, her fear tangible and all-consuming, was far from over. Her journey through the Appalachian wilderness had turned into a surreal and terrifying ordeal, with every step taking her deeper into the heart of darkness. Leah's breaths came in ragged gasps as she darted through the dark underbrush, her only focus to put distance between herself and the monstrous creature. Every shadow in the moonlit forest seemed to move, every noise made her heart skip. Her legs ached from the exertion, and her mind reeled with terror, but the primal instinct to survive pushed her onward. Ahead, the moonlight reflected off what looked like a larger water body, a sign she was nearing the river. Heartened, Leah pushed her tired legs faster towards the glimmering light, hoping the river's path would offer a clearer route and slow her pursuer. She burst through the last line of trees and almost stumbled into the rushing waters of the river, its surface shimmering under the night sky. Pausing to catch her breath, Leah looked across to the other side, considering whether she could make it across or should follow the riverbank. Her decision was made in an instant as she heard the chilling rustle of leaves and the soft, ghastly whisper behind her, closer than before. Without a second thought, she jumped into the cold water, the shock of its temperature stealing her breath away. The current was stronger than she'd anticipated. It tugged at her, pulling her downstream as she fought to keep her head above water. She swam with all her remaining strength, aiming for the opposite bank, her mind singularly focused on escape. The cold of the water numbed her limbs, making each stroke feel heavier, but fear of what lay behind her fueled her desperation. Reaching the opposite shore, Leah dragged herself out of the water, her body shivering uncontrollably from cold and fear. She didn't stop to rest, though every muscle screamed in protest. She had to put as much distance as possible between herself and the creature. Wet, cold, and terrified, she continued her frantic escape along the riverbank. The landscape began to change as the river widened and the forest receded, offering less cover but also fewer obstacles. Leah's hope renewed as she saw a hint of pre-dawn light starting to filter through the trees. Maybe, just maybe, she could make it out of this nightmare. As she moved, Leah's mind raced, trying to piece together the reality of her situation. Was the creature a figment of local folklore come to life? Or had isolation and fear conjured a beast from the shadows of her mind? 
The physicality of its pursuit was undeniable, its presence both seen and felt, driving such thoughts to the back of her mind. Survival was all that mattered. Just as she began to hope she might escape, a new sound cut through the night. The unmistakable noise of something large moving through the water. Leah froze, her eyes scanning the dark river. A figure emerged on the shore behind her, its movements eerily silent for its size. The creature was relentless. With the first rays of dawn illuminating the sky, Leah faced a stark choice. Continue running along the river, hoping to find help, or veer back into the dense woods to lose her pursuer. Each option carried its own risks in the growing light of day. The creature's silhouette was stark against the brightening horizon, a nightmarish vision that propelled Leah to make a desperate decision. Her survival story, a harrowing chase through the haunted forest, was far from over. As dawn broke over the Appalachian wilderness, Leah's fear and resolve clashed with the unearthly presence that hunted her. Her path forward was uncertain, the river beside her a constant companion in her flight, and the woods around her a dark labyrinth that might yet hold her salvation, or her doom. With dawn creeping into the sky, Leah made a split-second decision to veer back into the woods, believing the dense foliage might offer better cover against her relentless pursuer. Her lungs burned with exertion, and her limbs ached with cold, but the terror of the creature's close presence fueled her desperate flight. She pushed through the undergrowth, her ears tuned to the sounds of the creature's movements which seemed to mirror her own, always just a heartbeat behind. The forest was alive with the light of early morning, but the beauty of the dawn was lost on Leah, whose only focus was survival. As she ran, the whispers returned, now clear and chillingly articulate, chanting her name in a haunting cadence that seemed to come from the trees themselves. Leah. Leah. The voices swirled around her, disorienting, pushing her deeper into panic. Suddenly, Leah stumbled over a root and fell hard to the ground. The impact knocked the wind out of her, and for a moment she lay there, dazed, her face pressed against the cold, damp earth. She tried to rise, but a sharp pain shot through her ankle, crippling her efforts to stand. From the corner of her eye, she saw the creature approaching, its form more terrifying in the growing daylight. It moved with a disjointed grace, its elongated limbs contorting unnaturally as it advanced. Leah crawled backward, her hands clutching at the dirt, pulling herself along with agonizing slowness. The creature stopped just feet away from her, its glowing eyes fixed on her, unblinking. Leah could see it clearly now, the grotesque thinness of its body, its skin pale and stretched taut over sharp bones, and its face, a horrifying mask of malice and hunger. Frozen by fear, Leah watched as it crouched down to her level, its face inches from hers. Its breath was cold and fetid, smelling of decay. It spoke then, not with a whisper, but with a clear, chilling voice that echoed through the silent woods. You cannot escape, it hissed, its fingers reaching out to gently touch her face, with a grotesque tenderness. Leah's heart pounded in her chest, her breaths coming in short, sharp gasps as she felt the cold touch of the creature. It leaned closer, and she could feel the pull of its gaze, drawing her into an abyss from which there was no escape. Her mind screamed for her to look away, to close her eyes, but she was powerless, caught in the creature's hypnotic presence. The last thing Leah saw was the creature's smile, a ghastly, triumphant curling of its lips before everything went dark. The forest swallowed her scream, muffling it under the canopy of trees. When hikers found her camera days later, nestled in the undergrowth not far from the river, the last photo taken was of the dawn, beautiful and serene, with no sign of the horror that had unfolded just beyond the lens's reach. Leah Thompson was never seen again, her disappearance, another dark mystery of the Appalachian forest, whispered about in the glow of campfires and speculated upon in hushed tones by those who dared to walk the haunted paths where shadows dwell. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video, 